Hello again, Springy here. Court, Kerbo, four string, active bass. As you can see, got a pretty fancy body on it. Come back here for a minute. Okay, Court Kerbo bass. Greg Kerbo um, designed loads of basses. Uh, slap bass was one of his fortes, so the body and all the electronics uh, sort of designed for that purpose. Uh, this one is typical four string bass. It's got about a million frets on this. The uh, fretboard is as long as the M1. Uh, 24 fret, 25th fret, 26th fret, three quarters of one, 27th fret, about half a fret. <clears throat> Um, maple neck, the body is, again, with most of my guitars, strange, uh, it's composite, it's some sort of fancy weird plastic stuff, and the fretboard is also the same stuff, um, I think it's a, supposed to be, it's supposed to resemble um, ebony, but it's not. It's made out of some sort of plasticky resin thing. Um, but yet again, it really, really stiffens up the neck and helps with uh, keeping the tuning in place. Uh, the body and the neck don't seem to react very much at all to uh, temperature and humidity, which is brilliant. While we're here, it has one pickup, a Bartolini Mark I. Um, is active. Uh, it is really powerful. Uh, the bridge, probably just a court based bridge, a cast, sort of like a die cast aluminium. Um, while we're here again, we've got only having one pickup, master volume, and we've got a, a bass, mid, and treble. Uh, EQ like a boost, and then there's a there's a center center notch for each one. Um, and here, this switch, this switch upwards sends the sound, the signal through the EQ. Uh, if it's in this position, it avoids the EQ. And it's for the slap bass setting. Now the um, well, the tone settings for that position upside down on the back, of course. Hang on. Where is it? Some tiny little screws. Um, as you can see, slap depth, i.e bass tone and overall gain so I haven't actually adjusted it on this because it sounds fine and to be honest I don't really use it on that setting even though I do a bit of slap machine heads um, tuners sorry not sure what they are, but it's the same sort of die cast aluminium look as the bridge tailpiece. Uh, they're really smooth. They're like Grovers, um, but I'm not sure who made them. But they're really nice and um, they don't slip or anything. Nuts. Don't know what the nut is, but it works. Uh, I've put some pencil graphite in there just to help when tuning. Um, nice little removable truss rod cover. It's got a standard single truss rod in it. Uh, you can see this one was inspected on 
whatever that date is, I can't see it. 4th of July 2007. I brought it on the 4th of July 2015. It was still brand new. It'd been sat in the shop all that time. It was upstairs. The guy didn't even know he had it. But because he's my mate in the music shop, we had a good old sift through his bases and we found this one. Brand new, still in all its packaging. It's however many years old, uh, 2007, 2015, uh, seven, eight years old, never been touched. Um, and I got it for a silly price. These are, I think if you can still find one, I guess they probably don't even make them anymore. Um, I think the nearest version of this that's available now, you're probably looking at £500. But I didn't pay anywhere near that. Uh, so, what else can I tell you? We'll have a, I'll turn it on and I'll give you a look, quick run through of the various bits and pieces. Okay, hopefully my light and sound's a bit better on this video. Let's turn her on. Wow, that's loud. Um, okay, one pickup, so obviously volume's up. If I bring all of the tones down, quite flat. Roll the bass full on. Uh, actually, this doesn't work because I've got it on the wrong setting on the switch. Okay, try again through the EQ this time. Everything off, volume's up. Bass. Uh, let me get this right. I was right, that's the volume. Okay. Uh, It's a, it's a proper EQ, so with everything rolled off, nothing. Bass on. Bugger all. <laughs> Mid. Treble. That's my usual setting. the slap bit where it bypasses the EQ that's on I think it just takes all the middle out basically uh, the slap now if I did the same with the EQ in, be a lot louder and a lot brighter with some middle. So, excuse my rubbish playing, but uh, that's just a brief look over of the Court Kerbo bass, designed by Greg Kerbo. Sadly passed away. Um, these are Kerbo signature series, if you like, made by Court, who make guitars in their factories in Korea for lots of other brands. If this was an actual 
Kerbo base, not a court Kerbo base, you'd probably be looking at three or four thousand pounds for this. Um, but for a tenth of that price, uh, it's a really good base. It's excellent. The sound's fantastic. I use it for recording because of the active circuitry. Um, and I'd recommend it highly if you can find one. The other thing is the body is tiny, as you probably noticed with my other bases. I do like a small bodied base. Um, I've built a few in the past. Uh, I say I've built them, I've chopped up some other bases, hacked the wings off, horns, everything, and just made some real sort of cricket bat small designs. I just don't like hulking around a great big precision or jazz base. I've had a few in the past and I just don't see the point. Um, and I'm in the camp that the, the, the wooden construction of the base, I personally don't think makes a lot of difference to the tone. I think it's all about the electronics, but that's a bit of a, a mute point. Um, I'll probably get slated for that. So if you know different, brilliant, whatever works for you. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Springy. Uh, next time, I'm going to have a look at the amps and the 10,000 pedals I use to make up for my lack of ability. Thanks for watching. I've been Springy. Cheers.